a good day here at Sharon United Methodist Church. There's people over there talking. And there's people over here not talking. Guess where my wife is sitting. She'll get me later, don't. It's a great day. We're glad you're joining us via this uh, means. We are outdoors. It's a beautiful day. It's beautiful when God's people gather and they gather to worship. They gather because God's called to us. He's calling to you right now. Come, come and worship. The Psalm says, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. If you want to give us, uh, send us a, a prayer request, because right after worship, we're taking all of these names and we're lifting them up before the Lord in a time of prayer. We want to include your prayer request. Please go to our website, www.sharonumchurch.org. You'll see a, a place there to submit a prayer request. Uh, we'd love to, we'd love to uh, take your prayer request and uh, to receive it and to take it before the Lord. Are you ready to do battle? See, if you're following Jesus, you've been called into a battle, a battle between good and evil, a battle between the forces aligned against God and a those forces that are with God. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about putting on the full armor of God. We started last week. We're going to include that message today. Stay tuned, as they say. There's some other things there on that website. If you want to give it, besides a prayer request, you can learn more about the church, and there's a place to make a donation. We're grateful for everyone who's been able to support us uh, through these trying times. I think we're about week 20 of uh, COVID-19, and it's wearing thin, wearing thin for a lot of us. God will see you through. Hang on to the Lord. We're going to start worship, and we start with a call to worship. Our call to worship comes to us from Psalm 91. You who dwell in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. Say this, God, you are my refuge. I trust in you, and I am safe. Surely God will save you from hidden traps, shield you from deadly hazards. God's huge outstretched arms protect you. Under them you are safe. If you'll hold on to me for dear life, says God, I'll get you out of any trouble. I'll give you the best of care if you'll only get to know and trust me. I'll give you the best of care if you only get to know me and trust me, put your faith in God today. And that's where safety is found. Oh, you might go through trials and tribulations, but you'll be kept safe. You'll be kept safe from anything the devil throws at you. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this, this new day you gave us. We thank you for a time to gather, for worship, to listen to you speak to our hearts and to our minds. And so come Holy Spirit and fall afresh upon us that we would hear your living word for our life this very day. We ask it in Christ Jesus. Amen. I'm still trying to figure out how to do this thing with wind. Our reading is, our lesson is from uh, Ephesians 6. We've been here, like I said, this is the second week. Paul writes, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggles not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, Put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you've done everything, to stand. Stand firm then, with the belt of truth buckled around your middle, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all of this, take up the shield of faith, with which you could extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Put on the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, 
and pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for the Lord's people. Pray also for me that whenever I speak, words may be given to me so that I may fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. My brothers and sisters, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We're still not singing, but you know this hymn, so let's. it's a responsive reading of uh, It Is Well With My Soul. You know, if you hum it under your breath real quietly, we'll let you do that. When peace, like a river, attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever, whatever my lot, lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. Though Satan should buffet, though trials should come, let this blessed assurance control. That Christ has regarded my helpless estate and has shed his own blood for my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. And Lord, haste the day when my faith shall be sight. The clouds rolled back like a scroll. The trump shall resound and the Lord shall descend. Even so, it is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. You just want to sing that one, don't you? Me too. Yeah. Me too. So when you go home tonight, tonight, today, <laughs> when you go, you uh, pull that out, you can sing it to your heart's content. Uh, there's an announcement I forgot to make at the beginning. Uh, we're celebrating uh, the fact that uh, a young man from the congregation is heading off for uh, service in our military. And so we're going to pray for chase but in celebration of that uh we have cake individual pieces uh wrapped up they're in the kitchen window and we invite you after service to uh send somebody up there and get a piece of cake and you can celebrate uh well i think it's a good thing to celebrate we appreciate your service all right As we begin the examination of, of what it means to be a Christian, of, of following after Jesus, of putting on, as he calls us, St. Paul calls it, put on the full armor of God, we discover, we discover that uh, we've been conscripted. We've been drafted. We've been signed up for this battle that exists between evil and good. All those forces that are aligned against God and God's purpose and those forces that are trying to bring in the kingdom of God with the help of the Holy Spirit. There's a battle going on in the spiritual realm. We don't see it with our eyes, uh, but we don't do ourselves any favors if, if we deny this reality. And, and likewise, we really don't do ourselves any, any benefit if we every time there's any mishap or uh, any kind of little, I don't know, problem that we immediately think, oh, I'm under spiritual attack. These are, you know, being out at the extremes. No, but the reality is something's going on and something's going on day by day at every moment. And so it is that we need discernment if we're to determine when in fact we're under attack from the evil one. The good news, the really good news is that we're not left defenseless, that God, God provides, that the Holy Spirit comes to help us, to encourage us, to, to take up these weapons as Paul speaks of them. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes, is how Paul writes. Be strong 
be strong, not only in your, your intellect or your emotional maturity or, or your faith. Be strong in the Lord. See, God is eager and willing to provide strength for us that we might, that we might get through any trial, that we might see our way through any tribulation. It requires one thing. It requires for us to take up, to put on that which God has given to us. There's a choice to be made. We either are going to uh, live for God and God's ways, or we're not. And now that may be, you know, and I understand that there's some days that I'm much more aligned with God, and some days I'm maybe not so aligned with God. That's the reality. That's the battle that's going on. It was at our baptism when we raised our right hand, so to speak. It was at our baptism when we were enlisted into God's mighty work. The vows that, this is a, a repeat of last week, but remember the vows that were asked of us or asked of our sponsors. Do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness? Do you reject the evil powers? Do you repent of your sin? Do you accept the freedom that God gives you to resist evil, to resist injustice, to resist oppression in whatever form it might present itself to you? And do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior and put your whole trust in his grace and promise to serve him in union with all others? See, as, as followers of Christ, we're in the Lord's army. We're called to be aware that that evil's about us. And, we're, and this evil is always seeking a way to dissuade us of the truth of the gospel, to, to dis dismiss our faith, to discourage us. Why do you meet out in the... Yeah, you know, I mean, it's nice being out in the shade, but there are little worms falling off this tree, Lord. I mean, really? <laughs> could be of the devil. I'm just saying, or could be a little worm just peach getting on my sermon. But... Why are you doing that? Because there's something true about the gospel. There's something true about Jesus. I think that the, uh, the, the subtle way that the devil comes, uh, the attack that we most often face is summarized in three basic ways. That, that God can't so we get discouraged. That God won't. See, because you think your sin just, uh, your sin is too great for God's grace. And the last one is that God's not listening. That you're all alone. And it's in those three ways that I think the devil attacks us most, at least in my experience. And so we need the truth of the gospel. Last week we, we took that look at the belt of truth we looked at the breastplate of righteousness and justice today we pick up with the next piece have your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel and then from uh, the gospel of peace that peace here <clears throat> it's not just the uh, absence of absence of warfare or absence of of any kind of uh, tension or violence it, it's a peace that reflects who God is. It's an attribute of God. The scriptures testify to this a time and time again. And so it means more than, it means so much more. It's a peace, a shalom that, that is whole, makes you whole, that, that gives you a, a firm place where to stand. It's, it's a sense of, of being complete. No matter what's going on around you, that within you there's a completeness because of God's peace that you have, uh, have acquired or you've received. This is the good news. This is the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The, the prophet Isaiah uh, spoke of this, the coming of the Prince of Peace. We read that passage every year around Christmas time in Isaiah 9 and 6. Zechariah uh, spoke in the Gospel of Luke of this child, this child who would guide our feet in the way of peace when he spoke of Jesus. 
and Jesus himself and the Beatitudes and in Matthew 5 says blessed are the peacemakers for they will be called children of God peace it's something about who God really is and how God really works it's something we're also known for if we share in the life of Christ so any encouragement for violence any encouragement for hatred towards someone else because they don't eat uh, okra. <laughs> Who eats okra here? Boil? Yeah. Oh, some of you are worse than I thought. <laughs> right? But but any 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 encouragement that we not like somebody because of some external. Friends, this is from this is the devil speaking. This is the devil whispering in your ear. I hope I don't need that page. <laughs> but I think that's where I'm You need a close fit. Okay, the guy's laughing at the preacher starting to make me a little anxious. Paul's writing this letter to the church in Ephesus or to the, the a group of churches that are in that in that area and he says as we heard stand firm in the end stand and see the easiest way the easiest way for the evil one to, to succeed in shaking us loose from standing firm is to tempt us to tempt us with enmity with anger with worry anxiety so when I was in scouting uh, uh, Chase, I don't know if you ever played this game. When I was in scouting, uh, two scouts would, I got to stay on camera, two scouts would face each other and they would uh, put a foot next to each other and they would grab wrists or forearms. And on the word go, they would try to pull or push the other one and get them off balance. And whoever, whoever took a step was the loser. It's this sense of what of what the enemy is trying to do is trying to knock us off balance think about it anxiety fear anger hatred what do they do they knock us off balance we lose the peace that's promised to us in Jesus it is the gospel of peace that keeps us standing firm and allows us allows us not to be knocked off balance at all next comes the uh, the fourth piece is the shield of faith and and Paul Paul's using the image of a Roman soldier of his day and the Roman soldier of his day would have a, a four or five foot uh, shield made out of animal hides that had been toughened up hardened and before that Roman soldier would go into battle they would often dip them in the water and so that if the enemy was firing fiery darts fiery arrows hit the shield go out the shield wouldn't catch on fire it's that sense and so it is that that as Christians we've been dipped in the waters of baptism we have the shield of faith our trust is in him who calls us he calls us to follow him he's the same who redeems us day after day after day he's the same who now in heaven is there praying for us the Spirit comes, the Holy Spirit comes and testifies to us all the things that Jesus said and did. So another hymn, Ray Palmer in 1875 wrote this hymn. He says, My faith looks up to thee, thou Lamb of Calvary, Savior divine. Now hear me while I pray. Take all my guilt away. Oh, let me from this day be wholly thine. When life's dark maze I tread and griefs around me spread be thou my guide bid darkness turn to day wipe sorrows tears away nor let me ever stray from thee aside remaining loyal to Christ and regularly dipping into the into the water of God's word to be replenished help us combat these flaming arrows of doubt and discouragement of despair that come Lastly, or next, we are to take on the helmet of salvation. Tom Wright says it distinctly. What is this helmet of salvation? It, it's knowing, 
It's knowing that you already belong to the family of the risen Messiah, that you have therefore already been rescued from the ultimate enemy, right? So the ultimate enemy is death, but you've been rescued from that in Christ Jesus. And it enables you to face all secondary enemies. And so he says, wear this helmet daily. You've been rescued. You've been redeemed. You're protected. The word of God gives us the upper hand against every temptation that the evil one might throw at us. So when you're tempted, pick up the sword of the word of God. What's that word? It's the gospel, right? It's the gospel which through, through which God works his mighty plans of salvation. It's the cleansing work of our hearts and of our minds. It's the work of God. It's the gospel that changes us, fundamentally changes us. It's given to you. Will you pick it up? It's given to you to help you stand firm. It's given to you to be a help, a daily help. And so it is in my life. I find that a daily devotion helps. It clears my mind first thing in the morning. At midday, I, it causes me to reflect further in the evening, to take time and to say, Lord, what were, where were you today? What were you teaching me? Times to study God's word to have a Bible study, to search the scriptures. I'm looking for help, Lord. Where will you direct my eyes? Finally, Paul says, after all of this, after all these weapons, pray in the Spirit. Pray in the Spirit on all occasions, with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, he says, be alert. Be alert and always keep praying for the saints. See, the point of prayer, the point of prayer is that it accomplishes things that we can't do on our own effort. We can't, we can't organize uh, nearly uh, to get something done uh, as well as praying about something. Our skill set might be great, but it's when we start praying that things get done. How does prayer work? It does. Okay? How? I, I, I'm not here to clear up that mystery. Uh, William Temple of, uh, was Archbishop of Canterbury in England. He declared that whatever else one might say about whether prayer worked, he noticed that when he prayed, coincidences happened. When he stopped praying, coincidences stopped happening. Think about the athlete. Think about the athlete who, who might be lucky to get that hit, to score that goal. But the more practice they put in, the more chances they're going to be lucky. I'll tell a quick story. Uh, my, my, uh, I have a nephew down in Texas who was a major league pitcher. When he was in high school, he could throw a 90, 95 mile an hour fastball. But he started working on a curveball. And so one day, him and his brother were out in the pasture and they said, Come on, Uncle Pete, we, uh, we need a batter. <laughs> I say, all right. He went out there and his brother says, whatever you do, don't move. <laughs> I said, I don't think I like this game. And he said, it's going to look like it's going to hit you. Don't move. You'll be okay. Sure enough, I've never seen it. Because, look, when I quit baseball in Little League, nobody was throwing a curveball like that. I swear that curveball, I, I thought he was beating me. Stand firm. Don't move. Of course, his brother said, that's three in a row, you're out. <laughs> okay, fair enough. You might be lucky. It might be coincidence, but it's a lot more than that when you pray. It's, it's to be engaged by and to engage with the Spirit of God. That's what happens when we pray. And so it's not coincidence. It's not luck. Paul, Paul's convinced that no matter how long you've been walking with Jesus, your prayer makes a difference. Your prayer makes a difference. 
prayer that Paul's speaking of, again, it's not these sleepy little whispers that you say, oh, God, why did I stay out in the sun with no hand on my head? It's a flame. I've been, been known to pray that. It's not the prayer at night that you say, please, let sleep come so I can, can just get out of this. Now, it's not sleepy time prayers. It's not the quick, oh, God, I'll never do that again kind of prayer. It's the prayer that's consistent. It's the prayer that happens again and again and again. The prayer that's intentional. Lord, this is what I'm seeking. We're praying for this and this very specifically. Oh no, this is the prayer that, that says, uh, I'm part of something greater than myself. And so others, I join with my brothers and my sisters who also are praying. It's a prayer that's honest. This is where my heart is, Lord. I don't like it. There's nothing I can do about it. I wish you would do something about it. It's a kind of it's a way of praying that requires you to be alert. Be awake. God's working. God's moving. Don't know how. I just know He is. Stay awake. Keep alert. And so this is why after every worship service, at some point today, and and now our practice is we're going to gather here where you're sitting right now. The intercessory prayer team is gathering and we're going to be praying. We're going to pray. We've been praying for some uh, circumstances and situations, some individuals for several weeks. We're consistent. We're intentional. We want to see God work. We want his hedge of protection around people who are going through dangerous times. We want to see his healing come upon people who are, who are struggling today. We're honest. Lord, without you, we could do nothing. That's why we invite your prayer requests through our through our website. Or it, we want to, but we take this thing serious. We don't know how God's going to answer that prayer. We're just going to keep our eyes open. We're going to stay awake and alert to see God work. So ask yourself now, as I conclude, where what of all this in prayer and the shield of faith and and the sword of the Spirit, and the gospel of peace on your feet, righteousness, truth. Is there an area of your life that needs more work? Maybe you need to take this equipment and polish it up. Is there an adjustment that needs to be made? God's willing. God's eager to help if you'll ask. All you have to do is ask. All you have to do is receive that which God wants to give to you. And then to live. To live your life. The life that's offered to you in Jesus Christ. That's all you have to do. God's eager. God's willing. Don't let the devil tell you, oh, you know, your life is too bad or your life is too good. Don't let any thought tell you different. God is eager and willing to engage with you and invite your engagement with him and your life will change. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Before the wind blows off the rest of us. Thank you. So uh, Chase, would you come up here? Stand right there. So in a, eight days, he's going to meet somebody that doesn't love him as much as his mom. <laughs> <laughs> but he's got nothing but your future in mind. That drill instructor is going to uh, do help transform you. <laughs> yeah. Body and mind. So I thought we'd take a opportunity to uh to pray you can put your hand out towards him we're not we're supposed to be social distancing <laughs> let's pray lord we thank you we thank you for uh young men like chase who answer the call of a nation to come come to her defense and so lord we pray we pray that trusting that, that they're going to change him his body and maybe change a little bit of his thinking but lord we pray that your spirit fall upon him that he draws closer to you in this time as well. That you protect him and strengthen him for the task yet ahead. And Lord, as he walks through his days, he does so knowing that he's 
been baptized in Christ, that before he was uh, raising his right hand for the U.S., he was, he was raising his right hand for Jesus. So we thank you, Lord. We thank you for the, his uh, integrity, and we thank you for his willingness. And we thank you most of all, Lord, for your great love that, that flows into him. So now bless him and keep him, Lord, and strengthen him every day as he walks with you. And all of God's people say, Amen. Amen. All right. A couple other uh, announcements uh, or prayer requests. Uh, somebody has a birthday coming up this week. That guy. <laughs> you you want to share how old? You're young? Reno? Maybe five. Amen. Thank you. We pray a blessing. Uh, I, have a, I have a friend that works for the underground church in China. And he works for an organization that trains pastors. But they're a worldwide organization. I don't know if you've been watching the news, uh, depending on what news you, you're watching. But uh, my, friend, my friend sent out a prayer request for uh, the churches of Nigeria. Uh, many, many churches and many pastors are under great pressure. Um, churches being burned. Uh, the story, he shared the story of of uh, one of the pastors that they worked with who uh, who escaped death, but his colleague didn't, as they were ambushed recently. So I, I, as we pray, we pray for the church worldwide, but we pray it in Nigeria especially. Um, I want to tell you a little bit about a well being dug in uh, the DRC. I've been sitting on it for a week or two. The well has uh, been under construction. Yeah, woo woo, that's right. <laughs> uh, but the the what do you call it? The wellhead's not there yet. So I'm waiting. You'll see it. I've asked the pastor. You make sure that you get the first bucket of water coming out of that well. Yes. So uh, I haven't heard back. I imagine today I'll hear back from him. But uh, it's it's happening. He did tell me. He said that the people of that village of Luigi in the Democratic Republic of Congo. They can't believe it. They had heard, they had heard church people, they had heard Methodists talking how there was a church in America that was going to build a well. And the community didn't believe them. Until that truck and those guys showed up and they started putting that well in. And now, now they're excited. I want you to think about how do you think the evangelism of that church is going to Immediately, yeah, uh, they, you know, and uh, Brother Cor is an evangelist. He's a trained evangelist. He's going to make things happen. Brother, I know we're praying for you, and uh, I know great things are coming to your church. So I want you to remember that as well. Um, there was a car accident yesterday, and there, uh, people, some were hurt, and some weren't, and we ask you to, to remember those as well. We have that list that we, we take before the Lord every Sunday. On that list is Paul Whalen, and we continue to pray for him and his family, for his release. We pray for Scott and Lynn. We pray for Les and Jackie, for Michael and Tyler. We pray for this church, for me, and, and for the leadership of the church as we continue to navigate our way through these days. We pray for Kara and Neil, for Jason and Chase, for Kay and Angel and Janet and Joyce. Those are some of the names that that we're lifting up today. I invite you to come with me now in this time of prayer. Gracious God, we thank you for the beauty of this day and, and how it testifies to who you are. This day you've made and you filled with your loving presence and Lord, for the place in our bodies, our minds, our spirits that we can, we can experience it, we thank you. We offer up our words of praise. Your, your throne, Lord, is built on the foundation of righteousness and justice. And so we pray for that. We pray for righteousness and justice in our land. We thank you that, that we don't have all of the answers. But, but here, Lord, when we pray, we know something is happening. When we come to worship, something is happening. 
For in you, Lord, all things are revealed. We thank you, Lord, for, for our faith, our faith that's not measured by how much energy we bring to it day by day, but, but rather how humble we are, how contrite our heart is. We thank you that you have so much faith in us. You trust us, Lord. You love us. You're willing to work with us. We give thanks, Lord, for the eternal truths of the faith that's been handed down to us through the generation. But you're a God who's covenanted again and again with a people that have turned their back on you. You're the God who's delivered us again and again because we're a people who have strayed and lost our way. You're a God who's provided again and again for a people who at times are very ungrateful for the gifts received. That you are a God whose steadfast love endures forever. We thank you that you love the world that in the fullness of time you sent your only son Jesus. We pray, Lord, this day that we might come to understand how his life and his death gained for us life abundant and life eternal. Lord, we thank you that you're the great physician, that healing is in your wings. And so, Lord, we would bring before you now and place in the shadow of your wings those who are struggling, those who are facing disease, those who are ill and sick those in the hospital, those at home, those stricken with cancer, those with chronic pain. Lord, we bring them all into, into your presence and pray, Lord, relieve them of their pain, bring healing to their bodies, strengthen, strengthen their soul and their spirit that they too would be found standing, standing in the gospel, the good news of Jesus. Lord, finally, finally help us Help us to believe that, that we can be set free, fully free, by the loving truth, the truth of who you are, known to us in Jesus, the very same who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen, indeed. Um, as we conclude worship, uh, for those here, there is an offering plate back on the table that if you're prepared for that, we thank you very much. For those online, you can go to the website and do it there. We thank you for that as well. Uh, don't forget to get your piece of cake because it's not going home to the parsonage. We've got enough cake already. We're glad you came today. We're glad you joined us here online. We pray a special blessing to everyone watching. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you peace. And for you, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore and all God's children say Amen, Amen. Hallelujah